so hello friends this is another important uh, video in our blood series hematology series that is uh, your hemophilia okay we are discussing now coagulation disorders okay in previous video we have discussed about the von willebrand disease clear so now in this video we will focus on the hemophilia so this is a coagulation disorder the first point that is it is x linked recessive hemorrhagic disease okay and it will be due to either f8 gene mutation or f9 gene mutation okay if there is abnormalities in f8 gene then it will be known as hemophilia hemophilia a or it is also known as classical hemophilia or if there is mutation in f9 gene then it is known as hemophilia b okay so this is the introduction now hemophilia a is more prevalent 80 percent cases belong to hemophilia a male subjects are more suffered okay females are generally carrier now the next question that is most common hemophilia a mutation results from then answer will be inversion of intron 22 sequence okay so this is very important mcu question for your examination inversion of intron 22 sequence is the most common hemophilia a mutation clear it is occurring in about 40 percent of cases okay friends so this is the basic introduction about the hemophilia and one more point uh, i need to mention that clinically hemophilia a and hemophilia b are indistinguishable clear now we have divided the this in three okay sorry the first is your severe then moderate then the mild form of disease in severe form factor x8 or factor 9 is less than 1 percent in moderate 1 to 5 percent and in mild 6 to 30 percent okay so this is the basic okay now in severe and moderate form mind it in severe and moderate form moderate form is uh, presence of 1 to 5 percent of factor 8 or in severe that is less than 1 percent okay so in severe and moderate form there will be bleeding to joints that is known as him arthrosis okay bleeding in joint is known as him arthrosis so there will be bleeding in joint there will be bleeding in soft tissues also there is bleeding in muscles also okay so there will be bleeding in him uh, joints then there will be bleeding in soft tissues muscles after minor trauma or even spontaneously clear so this is about severe and moderate form then in mild form in mild form there will be infrequent bleeding secondary to trauma okay now early in life bleeding may present after your circumcision or rarely as intracranial hemorrhages clear so early in life bleeding may present after circumcision or uh, rarely as intracranial hemorrhages and this becomes more evident when the child begins to walk or crawl clear so this is the basic form now in severe form most common minded in severe form the most common bleeding manifestation is your recurrent him arthrosis okay bleeding the most common manifestation is recurrent him arthrosis which can affect every joint mainly knee joint elbow joint ankle joint shoulder joint like this now this acute hem arthrosis are painful and clinical features are local swelling erythema okay then to avoid pain patient may adopt a fixed position okay so patient generally try to adopt a fixed position which leads eventually to muscle contractures clear then very young children unable to communicate okay verbally okay and they will show irritability and a lack of movement of affected joints so communication is poor then uh, your patient will express irritability okay irritating behavior like this now hematomas in two muscles of distal part of limbs may lead to external compression of arteries vein or nerve that will eventually evolve into compartment syndrome so they are the important clinical feature through which you can diagnose the present of uh, hemophilia 
then breeding into oropharyngeal stresses, CNS, retroperitoneum is life threatening and it requires immediate therapy. Okay, and one more point that is retroperitoneal uh, hemorrhages. Retroperitoneal hemorrhages lead to accumulation of large quantity of blood with formation of masses with calcification and inflammatory tissue reaction, and that will give uh, like appearance like pseudo tumor syndrome. Okay, pseudo tumor syndrome. And all, it can also result in femoral nerve damage also. So these are important clinical features. Okay. Once again, revising those clinical features. Friends, that is painful, then local swelling and eczema will be there. Fixed position, patient trying to occupy, muscle contracture will be there. And uh, decreased communication, irritability is increased. Okay, irritability increase. Sorry. Then uh, your compartment syndrome may be there. Okay, oropharyngeal species bleeding, CNS bleeding, heteropatrinal bleeding, heteropatrinal bleeding sometimes give a pseudo tumor syndrome like. Okay, now hematuria is also frequent among hemophilic patients. Okay, so hematuria is also frequent, friends. Okay, so I will write here hematuria is also very frequent in hemophilic patient. Now, how do you treat the patient? So, first we will start factor replacement therapy this is very important okay. factor replacement therapy clear we will provide factor 8 and factor 9 and uh, one unit means amount of factor 8 or factor 9 in 1 ml of normal plasma okay this is defined as one unit and factor 8 is probably 100 nanogram per ml and factor 9 is 5 microgram per ml. Clear. And one more thing that uh, one unit of factor 8, I am talking about factor 8. So, one unit of factor 8 increases the plasma factor 8 level by 2%. And one unit of uh, factor 9, friends, it increases by 1%. Clear. So, there is formula for calculating the factor 8 dose and factor 9 dose. So, for factor 8 dose, friends, that is what is the target first target factor 8 level okay target factor 8 level minus factor 8 baseline level okay so target factor 8 level minus factor 8 baseline level into body weight that we have discussed that one unit increases by 2 percent mainly it is one unit of factor 8 per kg of body weight increases the plasma factor 8 level by 2 percent in the same way one unit of factor 9 per kg of body weight increases the plasma 9 by 1%. So target factor 8 level minus factor 8 baseline level into body weight into 0.5 unit per kg because 1 is equal to 2%. So we are multiplying by 0.5 unit per kg. In same way you will calculate factor 9. Uh, the formula is same. One only one change that is multiplication is by 1 unit per kg. Okay, and this still all, all the formula is same. Okay. So this is the trans uh, this is the transplacement replacement therapy. Okay. You can also give non transfusion therapy in that you can give drug DDAVP. It causes transient rise in factor 8 involvement factor by increasing the release from endothelial stores. Okay, it does not change the concentration of factor 9, it is only for factor 8. Okay, and DDAVP at uh, doses of 0.3 microgram per kg body weight over 20 minute period increases factor 8 level by 2 to 3 times. Not effective in severe hemophilic patients. Now the next is anti-fumilitic drugs in that you can use Absylum, so Absylum, Aminocaproic Acid, okay, then uh, Tranexamic Acid, Tranexamic Acid and Absylum Aminocaproic Acid in loading dose of 200 mg per kg followed by 100 mg per kg per dose, okay, every 6 hours. And Tranexamic Acid 25 mg per kg 3 to 2, 4 times a day, okay. Now moving to the next part that is one more important part here that is Bethesda assay. Okay, before going into the procedure, first we will discuss one more important part that is if APTT is normal, sorry, if APTT is increased, PT is normal, and platelet count is normal, then then there is three categorization that is no bleeding then mild bleeding and significant bleeding clear if no bleeding then there may be deficiency of high monoclonal kinetin p carotene or factor 12 deficiency 
if cases of mild bleeding then there may be deficiency of factor 11 if significant bleeding is present then you should look for fourth point that is acquired hemophilia 1 with 11 disease hemophilia a or hemophilia b for 1 with 11 disease you will perform the resto setting test which we have uh, talked about in previous video then you can easily isolate this acquired hemophilia in acquired hemophilia inhibitory antibody forms against factor 8 okay in acquired hemophilia antibody formation occurs clear so how you will differentiate the remaining three so you will mix 50 percent patient plasma plus 50 percent normal plasma okay mixing of 50 percent patient plasma with 50 percent normal plasma then there will be two group either aptt has improved and it becomes normal or aptt remains prolonged remains increased if aptt becomes normal then uh, you will conclude that only factor was deficient okay there was no antibody formation no antibody present means this is either hemophilia a or hemophilia b this is not the case of acquired hemophilia if aptt is prolonged still after mixing the normal blood then it indicated inhibitory antibody f form then it's a case of acquired hemophilia so you can easily differentiate between this clear so this is about your hemophilia okay friends so in next video we will discuss about next topic so thank you watching best of luck